So from your experience, what sort of things did you learn or how did you change some of the things that that you research or mm -hmm. you know that you study just based on what you went through? Well, at first a little bit of background. Um, originally I'm from Germany. Mm -hmm. I got my undergraduate degree, University of Munich, a medical school in physiology and a Nobel laureate Butenand. I uh, came over to the U.S., heard about Stony Brook, the famous Stony Brook of New York, mm -hmm. right? Got my uh, graduate assistantship there, got a PhD there. I was their assistant professor for a while and always interested in what's going on inside the body, you know, metabolic pathways how things are metabolized, right? Like, for example, if you know about that, you could tell why, as of today, the biggest problem in America, why people are so fat, overweight, out of shape, heart disease, and so on, guess what? Fructose. The high fructose corn syrup and all this junk, right, what they're selling us. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so studying and knowing about metabolism I started some aging research at Roosevelt University in Chicago. We published the data, and my lifelong mentor at that time, Professor Emmanuel Cheraskin from Alabama University School of Medicine, he sort of took me under his wings. I mean, he passed away in the meantime, but what a magnificent guy. He defined lifelong health as a state of homeostasis achieved by doing about 30 to 50 variables correctly. <clears throat> And the 50, uh, 30 to 50 variables, they can be summarized as health practices. So the more health practices you do correctly, the better is your overall state of health, the better is your immune system, mm -hmm. the better is your resistance against disease, the slower is your rate of aging, they all connect. Right? Okay. And in the meantime, telomere research confirmed that we are on the right track. Right? Telomere research confirmed, for example, that exercise is the strongest telomere lengthening, stress is the strongest uh, uh, telomere shortening, uh, overall health practices are very good. For example, there was a study in Germany, it's a very international study, they did a study at Saarland University in Germany, they studied the Danish twins and published in an American journal, right? And they looked at the uh, twins measured their telomeres, and whenever one of them died, they found it was always the one with the shorter telomeres. And it was always the shorter telomeres corresponded to health practices that were not really that good. You know? mm -hmm. And so all of this is now uh, confirmed that health practices are true anti-aging modalities. And putting those together, we have the number one <clears throat> Modality is exercise. Number two, we used to say nutrition. Well, definitely not. That's what it is. It's a detoxing. We have, we have so many toxic chemicals in our body, right? Mm -hmm. And for the detoxing, uh, there's a special program again where we can do it and we use a non-flushing niacin for that as a key and then sit in the sauna after a while. And uh, uh, that brings some of the toxic chemicals into the bloodstream and when we sit in a sauna, your skin is your second kidneys and you sweat it out. And then we have nutrition. Nutrition used to be very simple. Low fat diet and so on. Well, guess what? When you take the fat out of the diet and you eat the food, it tastes like horrible. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They put salt in and sweeteners. And the biggest problem with the sweeteners is fructose high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. Guess where it was discovered? Actually in Japan. And some people say, well, it's the Japanese revenge to World War II. <laughs> they gave us this stuff. And then in the US, you know, uh, with our agricultural capacities, uh, it is so inexpensive as a sweetener. Mm -hmm. And it is the definite number one cause now for aging bad health, overweight, heart disease, risk factors, and so on. And there were actually three very famous orthodox medicine people on CBS 60 Minutes a few weeks ago. And basically they were saying that uh, fructose is addictive, it's poison, 
right? It's a cancer, heart disease risk factor. And in the excesses in which we consume it, it is the number one problem we have. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really suggest everybody. You should take the, at home, take all the foods that you eat, read the label, and throw all the foods out, foods out that contain high fructose corn syrup, right? Or fructose as a sweetener. Mm -hmm. Well, why would I say that? Fructose is just another sugar, right? It's a natural. No, it really isn't. Natural arsenic is natural too, right? Mercury poisoning, mercury is natural, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. So that's all this thing that they know is just natural. This doesn't really chime, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, a key point here is, again, when you look at metabolic charts, you will see how your body metabolizes these substances differently. You know, like uh, uh, glucose is the basic fuel our body runs on. Every cell in our body can metabolize glucose and get energy out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, how about fructose? Oh, no, definitely not. The only organ that can really metabolize fructose is the liver. And if you take it in excess, and an excess is just a little bit, maybe 100 calories for women and 150 for men, anything above that, in terms of fructose or sugar in general, becomes poisonous. And the liver will metabolize it into fat, LDL, the cancer heart disease risk factor, the bad LDL. It causes uric acid and it affects NOS. What's NOS? NOS is nitric oxide synthetase, an enzyme that keeps your blood sugar low and that other healthy sexual thing up. 